We're going to pick up their story on the descent from the mountain and the rigors that ensued. Storm clouds on the mountains. How truly beautiful they are. Floating fountains bearing water for every well. The angels of streams and lakes brooding in the deep pure azure or sweeping along the ground over ridge and dome, over meadow, over forest, over garden and grove, lingering with cooling shadows, refreshing every flower and soothing rugged rock brows with a gentleness of touch and gesture no human hand can equal. A few minutes after 3 p.m., we began to force our way down the eastern ridge past the group of hissing fumaroles. The storm at once became inconceivably violent with a scarcely a preliminary scowl. The thermometer fell 22 degrees and soon sank below zero. Hail gave place to snow and darkness came on like night. The wind rising to the highest pitch of violence boomed and surged like breakers on a rocky coast. The lightnings flashed amid the desolate crags in terrible accord, their tremendous muffled detonations unrelieved by a single echo and seeming to come thudding passionately forth from out the very heart of the storm. After passing the hot springs, I halted in the shelter of a lava block to let Jerome, who had fallen a little behind, come up. Here, he opened a council. He maintained, in opposition to my views, that it was impossible to proceed. The ridge was too dangerous, the snow was blinding, and the frost too intense to be borne. And finally, that even supposing it possible for us to grope our way through the darkness, the wind was sufficiently violent to hurl us bodily over the cliffs, and that our only hope was in wearing away the afternoon and night among the fumaroles, where at least we should avoid freezing. Our discussions ended. Jerome made a dash from behind the lava block and began forcing his way back some 20 or 30 yards to the hot springs against the wind flood, wavering and struggling as if caught in a torrent of water. And after watching in vain for any flow, that the storm might have caused, that it might be urged as a new argument for attempting the descent, I was compelled to follow. Here, said Jerome, as we stood shivering in the midst of the hissing, sputtering fumaroles, we shall be safe from frost. Yes, said I, we can be in this mud and gravel, hot at least on one side, but how shall we protect our lungs from the acid gases? And how, after our clothing is saturated with melting snow, shall we be able to reach camp without freezing, even after the storm is over? We shall have to await the sunshine, and when will it come? I was raised on the holy ground, a running child in fields of clover I was, living in the grandeur of my father's land oh, oh, oh. By the side of the swirling seas I spent the days of childish wonder Those rocks I held in my young hands I never felt them slip away Oh, and the wind shone bright upon the waves, and the wind blew high as I was leaving. I sailed so far away, looking for adventure. dwells beyond our conceitful eyes and knowledge. From the dust of the earth, from the common elementary fund, the Creator has made Homo sapiens. From the same material, He has made every other creature, however noxious and insignificant to us. They are earth-born companions and our fellow mortals. This star, our own good earth, 
made many a successful journey around the heavens ere man was made, and whole kingdoms of creatures enjoyed existence and returned to dust ere man appeared to claim them. After human beings have also played their part in creation's plan, they too may disappear without any general burning or extraordinary commotion whatsoever. Crags held the dragon's eye White trout stank from lower pools Crystal writings dimmed upon the cliffs With none to read at midday Girls that land on the quartz sea They took the angry captain's toll as the marble nymphs drowned in the pools Past the footprints in the sun Past the dried seas of evenness and God From the forest of the peaceful The battle we have fought and are still fighting for the forests is a part of the eternal conflict between right and wrong, and we cannot expect to see an end of it. So we must count on watching and striving for these trees and should always be glad to find anything so surely good and noble to strive for. <laughs>